Good morning, friends. I'm glad you could be with me today as we study God's Word together in the Unfolding the Word ministry. We've been in the midst of an extended study of the book of Daniel. We're now in the ninth chapter of Daniel. And over the last couple of days, we've begun looking at that portion of the ninth chapter that introduces us to the prophecy of the 70 weeks. Today, I want to pick up our reading in verse 25 in the first part of verse 26. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks, and then for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again with squares and a moat, but in a troubled time. And after that, after the sixty-two weeks and the seven weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing. The prophecy of the 70 weeks. The prophecy intersecting the first and second coming of the promised Messiah. God was telling Daniel and all of us that the return from exile, while a promise that he would fulfill, the promise given to Jeremiah, after the 70 weeks of exile would be finished, <laughs> that return of Jews to Jerusalem and to Judea was not the same thing as God's ultimate answer for the Jews. It was merely the cessation of the promised discipline on them for their rebellion and idolatry. There would, in the unfolding plan of God, still exist a messianic age, an ultimate answer for mankind. There would be 490 years marking special events that would lead to this answer of God. In fact, this timeline intersects both the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This 70 weeks is in reference to 70 weeks of years, which in this case would be 490 years total. A portion of the 490 years would direct toward those events that would bring about the first coming of the Messiah. A portion of the 490 years separated in time would mark those times just preceding the promised second coming of the Messiah. Well, that's what we've seen so far. That's what we've been looking at. Today, I want to pick up on that first part of the 70 years. That portion of God's timeline of history related to the Jews, that brings about or points to the first coming, the promised coming of the Messiah, the suffering servant Messiah of Isaiah chapter 53. The prophecy identifies for us the exact timing of the Messiah, at least to his lifetime, to the events surrounding his lifetime. They focus on the anointed one, as the terminology is used here. Clearly, the beginning focus of the 70-year prophecy, the 490 years, is on the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnation. What John describes in John chapter 1, verse 14, is the word being made flesh to dwell among us. <laughs> his birth at Bethlehem and his subsequent life and ministry ending at the cross followed by the resurrection. And God says this promised first coming of the Isaiah 53 suffering servant Messiah, this promised first coming, the countdown to it would begin with the issuing of the decree to rebuild Jerusalem, to rebuild the walls, the fortifications, the city squares. Once that happened, there would be a movement forward. This, of course, was not merely the return from exile, as I've already said, because when the Jews returned from exile, uh, they didn't rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. They weren't given that permission. They didn't, in a sense, even rebuild the city, practically speaking. There is yet a future sort of edict that would give them that permission. They weren't going back to now rule in their homeland. They were going back to Jerusalem, to Judea, to be under the rule of the, of the Medo-Persian Empire, not their own land. Well, at any rate, 
the permission that would come that would allow them to rebuild the walls from that point in time, seven weeks in 62 weeks of years, or literally 483 years, would go by to the point in time in which the first coming of the Messiah would be revealed to Israel, would be revealed to the Jewish people and therefore to the world. So when was this decree given? Because it would seem to be pretty important, isn't it? That if God is saying, well, here's an exact period of time, you will know when it's fulfilled that the Messiah has been revealed. So when was this decree given that is being mentioned? That word to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, to build the walls, to make it a fortress city once again. When would that happen? Well, there were four edicts historically related to Israel. And as we look at those edicts, we will see clearly which one was referenced here in this 70 weeks prophecy. The first edict to go back to Jerusalem was actually issued the very year that this prophecy was given to Daniel. And that was the, pro that was the edict from Cyrus, the emperor, for the people to return. It was given in 538, 537 BC, somewhere in that range. Second Chronicles, chapter 36, verses 22 to 23, uh, is the classic place where we find this edict, not the only place, but where we find it. Let me read it to you. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah was fulfilled, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all of his kingdom and also put it in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. Now you remember back in our study of the earlier chapter, uh, in chapter 6, the picture of of the putting it in writing in the Medo-Persian Empire meant that the emperor, once it was put in writing, couldn't change the message. And that's why ultimately Daniel had to go to the lion's den and God rescued him. Well, here again, the edict to return was put in writing so nothing could disrupt it. Return from exile. Rebuild the temple. But you notice what's not in the edict? Rebuild the walls. No. They weren't given that permission at that point in time. It was an important point in Jewish history, but it was not the time that the 70 weeks is referring to. So it couldn't be then. Later on, we discover in the book of Ezra, in the time of Darius the Great, not the Darius who was the sub-ruler under Cyrus overseeing the Babylonian region, but Darius the Great, who came subsequent to Cyrus and became the broad emperor of the Medo-Persian Empire. In 519 BC, 20 so years later, he made another edict. Ezra chapter 6, let me read it to you, verse 7. Let the work on the house of the Lord, of the house of God alone, let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild this house of God on its site. Moreover, I make a decree regarding what you shall do for the elders of the Jews for the rebuilding of the house of God. The cost is to be paid to these men in full without delay from the royal revenue, the tribute of the province from beyond the river. Then whatever is needed, bulls, rams, sheep for burnt offering to the king of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, oil, as the priests of Jerusalem require, let it be given to them day by day without fail, that they may offer pleasing sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. Also, I make a decree that anyone, if anyone alters this edict, a beam shall be pulled out of his house and he shall be impaled on it, and his house shall be made a dunghill. May the God who has caused his name to dwell there overthrow any king or people who shall put out a hand to alter it or to destroy this house of God that's in Jerusalem. I, Darius, make this decree. Let it be done with all diligence. <laughs> so here's a second decree uh, occurring during the time of Ezra in the book of Ezra. And it was saying, Jews, you're already back there. More of you can go back, but you're back there and the temple hasn't been built. Get it built. 
And then, of course, that was the prime thing happening at under Ezra's ministry. Then he provided the funds for the temple. But you notice what's not said. They were not given permission to rebuild the walls. They were not given permission to turn it once again into a fortified city and really to control their own destiny. So this particular decree from Darius the Great at the time of Ezra is also not the point of the 70 weeks. Join me tomorrow as we look at two other decrees and discover when was the beginning point of this promised timeline of history leading to the first coming of the Messiah. God bless.